Hey folks, this is Dave Smith at Correctional Officer Lifestyle coming to you again with another video. This one is about paperwork. Paperwork and corrections. Honestly, the line, the job isn't finished till the paperwork is done. That was written for corrections. I have no doubt of that. But I want to start this video by showing you all my coffee cup that my wife made for me. Correctional Officer Lifestyle coffee cup. It's got a thin gray line on the back. It is glitter, but it's black glitter. It makes it acceptable to me. I love it. If you are interested in something like that, hit me up in the comments. Let me know, and we'll talk shop. All right? Paperwork in corrections. The saying, the job isn't finished till the paperwork is completed, was obviously coined for the Department of Corrections. Of that, there is no doubt. We can burn down a small forest in one day. It is not a problem, okay? The amount of paperwork that we produce in corrections is astounding. Now, that being said, there are three main kinds of reports that I can think about in corrections, okay? You have your disciplinary reports, which are the reports that you write for inmates that can't act right within the facility. Oh, excuse me. You have incident reports, which... Anytime an incident occurs that is outside the normal operations of your institution or facility that is requiring an incident report, and you have use of force reports, anytime that you use force on an inmate, it must be reported. There are obviously a bunch, a bunch more, many of them agency specific, many of them institutional specific. But these are the main three that I encounter on a regular basis. The disciplinary report, the incident report, and the use of force report. Okay? All of these reports have time frames. Okay? Most of them need to be completed by the end of your shift. Okay? Incident reports have to be completed by the end of your shift. DRs have to be completed by the end of your shifts. And use of force reports have to be completed by the end of shift. Okay, there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, incident reports, they go, you have the body of the report, then you have the shift supervisor's comments. Now, I'm talking about what happens in Florida, okay? And then it goes to the chief of security. Chief of security has to put his comments on it, and then it goes to the warden, okay? So, all of that has to happen in a certain amount of time, and if you don't get that done by the end of shift, number one, you might forget what happened. Or at least forget a couple of details about what happened. But number two, you might not get it where it needs to go in a timely manner. Okay, disciplinary reports. Inmates still have the right to due process. And if we write a disciplinary report, they eventually have to go to disciplinary court. And because of the due process, that time frame is very much alive and enforceable. So, you know, you uh, you want to get those done by the end of shift to make sure that you're not violating an inmate civil rights. And the last is the use of force report. The use of force report, that, that includes the use of force report, incident reports, disciplinary reports. That's all three wrapped up into one. So you... you You've got to get the time frames right on that one, okay? Um, excuse me. Switching back and forth from days to nights is not fun, folks. Um, it is necessary to be mindful of the fact that most reports are viewed by people that are not at your institution. And many of them have not worked in corrections. So there's some common mistakes that you need to avoid when you're writing your reports. Number one, do not use corrections-specific jargon or language. Um, that's the big one, okay? You get somebody that doesn't know anything about corrections and you put the word shank in there, they might not know that that's a homemade knife, okay? Um, tell a story. You want the reader of the report to be able to see the incident take place as they read your report. Okay. Um, if you write a vague report, 
and you don't you, you hit the who what where when why and how but you don't give any details as to the who what where when why and how somebody reading that report that has never worked in corrections might not be able to paint the picture that they need to paint with it okay you need to put in enough details that the layman will be able to understand what you're saying and the last thing is remember that you as the report writer need to explain your role in the incident a lot of people when they write reports they want to write about the report what happened what was your role in it why were you there what did you do when did you get there how much of it did you see these things are necessary, and I always include that in my reports. Um, such things as I was assigned to the dorm when the incident took place. Okay, If you're assigned to that dormitory, then they know why you're there. There's a reason why you're there. I responded to a call for assistance at the location of the incident. Okay, You might be assigned to a different unit, but somebody called for assistance and you arrived at, a, at that end at that location um i observed something as i was walking by that is a big one okay correctional officers generally keep their heads on a swivel they're not looking just in their unit they're looking everywhere if they walk anywhere they're looking for signs of trouble even if they're just walking to the soda machine to get a can of coke they're still going to be mindful of anything out of place in their institution. So just walking by, hearing something or seeing something that needs your attention, that is a viable reason for you to be there and to be the reporting employee. Okay. Last thing, and this is the big one for me. Okay. When the report is finished, have one of your peers proofread it before you submit it to your supervisor. This will alleviate any mistakes from being in the report when you turn it in. Okay. Um, I've always had the ability to write well. I was always the person that people went to to proofread my work or to proofread their work. That's been my role in my job for a pretty long time. Um, now as a supervisor, I'm getting a lot of reports that I don't know if a third grader wrote it or a professional correctional officer and the ability for somebody to pick that up, one of your peers, an officer or a sergeant to pick up that report, read it, look at you and tell you that it's bad we need to work on this let's make it better that is vital to getting those reports accurate and done okay absolutely vital folks that's what i've got for this one now whatever your agency policies are as far as attachments to the report um photographs shade of custard Whatever else you put with your reports, that's fine. But remember that those are just attachments and the report is the meat and potatoes of what you need. Okay. So do not use correction specific jargon. Tell a story that the readers will be able to see the incident take place as they read it. And remember that you need to explain why you were there. Okay, that, that's, that's one of my big ones. You need to explain why you're there and have somebody proofread it before you turn it in. Make sure that it fits the bill of what it needs to be. All right? That's all I got for this video, folks. Um, there is no place for domestic violence in this world. If you know the victim or you are the victim of a domestic violence situation, 1-800-799-SAFE. 1-800-799-7233. That is a domestic violence hotline. The people at the other end of that phone call have the tools and resources to help victims of domestic violence. 
If you know the aggressor in a domestic violence situation, remember to say something to somebody. The worst thing you can do is nothing. And if you are the aggressor, there's help for you too. All you got to do is understand that you need it and ask for it. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications when I post new videos. And engage. Hit me with some comments. All right. Let me know. Let me know what what your methodology is when it comes to reports. I'd be interested to know that. It might help. It might help me help my officers and sergeants grow to know what other people are doing. So hit me in the comments, folks. All right. Remember, love shouldn't hurt. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. Y'all stay safe behind the fence. I'll see you in the next video.